Hello and good morning. So today we're going to talk about how to be more effective in terms of communicating and how can we be better understood by, by our audience. I know that there are a lot of times that you thought you'll be able to be understood by your audience, but oh no, what's happening? They cannot seemingly understand what we are saying. So today, I'll try to be to be helping you in terms of how to be better understood by others. So I want you to understand that you and your listeners are very are totally different individuals, and with that, okay, there is what we call as cognitive barrier. I mean to say that your culture is so different with his or her culture. Your background is very different with his or her background. Your demographic is very different with her demographic. She has a different gender. He has a different educational background. He or she has a different likes and dislikes. So, in other words, okay, you also have a different communication skills. You have your own set of language. He has his own set of language. And and a lot more. And with that, that would be a barrier because you are totally coming from a different paradigm. So what I'm trying to say is that once you are communicating, it entails a lot of effort, a lot of energy, and more importantly, a lot of preparation. So once you're communicating, you also have to have a lot a lot of words and vocabulary so that if you'll not be understood in this vocabulary set then it might be better understood by using another word so it demands a lot of preparation so before your speaking engagement or in any communication you should be interested with life you should be interested with work you should be interested with school you should be interested with attitudes you should be interested in of course in the attitude of people in their different temperaments so you should be interested about life and people and of course you should be interested of how you can get these people work together in other words it demands a lot of preparation if you'd like to be a better speaker and to be understood by others because in terms of being understood there must be different ways of presenting our idea so that it will be understood by your listener in other words there are different ways of expressing emotions and and feelings attitudes and ideas and if you could see that this idea cannot be understood in one way then they should be willing to adjust and express it in another way so in that case as a speaker it demands a lot of preparation number two uh, because okay uh, you are talking with people the f one of the uh, prerequisite is that okay, they should trust you first okay as aristotle would term it you should have the ethos. The ethos meaning to say that they should trust and okay, find you credible. So how would they trust you, of course, once you arrived in a speaking engagement or once you're talking with, like for example, a group? They should feel that they can trust you by, of course, number one. They should feel the warmth in you. They should feel that you care for them. How they feel that, of course, in the way you smile. If you smile a lot, then there is a tendency that they will likely to trust you because you are a warm person. And also, they will also end up in the latter part. They may be feeling that you're a safe person, safe to open to, to open your their feelings too. So they'll be more vulnerable in opening their feelings to you in the latter part. Warmth in the sense of the gestures you're doing. You can do open gestures. And of course, in the vocabulary that you're using. The vocabulary that you, you, you should be using should be warm, should be interesting, should be loving, should be caring, should be compassionate. So if you're be loving, compassionate, caring, most likely they will trust you. Also, you should be creating an environment wherein they would feel that 
you're welcoming their ideas. You should not be judgmental. You should not be <clears throat> gender bias or cultural bias. <clears throat> In other words, they should feel that the training room, the the environment is safe for them to open so that they are also it all will also be building their trust to you and another way of you building your ethos or you're having a good a good credibility and trust is when you're using an easy language so even if you're very educated even if you're from a different from a different job or maybe you have a lot of highfalutin vocabulary if the audience you know are not that not that knowledgeable of very large vocabulary and even if they are you try it as much as possible to choose easy words because once you are choosing difficult words they are likely to tune out so the more familiar with the words with the words you're using the better they'll be tuning in to your message. So, words are just lights. Okay. The more that you present them in an easier and a shorter words, the more that they are likely to you to tune into your message. So, if if they're given a choice to choose between easy and difficult words, always choose the easy words. And if you're given a chance to choose between okay, monosyllabic or bisyllabic words, and in rather instead of using polysyllabic words or many syllables you have to choose the easier version so instead of using your remuneration you can choose salary instead of choosing garbage you can use trash so the easier and the more familiar people are in the words that you're using the better that they will be tuning into your language okay so again number one is to create a um, you have to make it sure that okay, they will lead you will lessen the noise barrier okay by understanding them first number two is you have to make it sure that you have that you will be able to get their trust and their credibility and of course number three is that you have to present logic or logos okay we learned that in school we have to, you know, that you have to include illustrations, you have to include facts, argument, you have to include statistics, you have to include a lot of examples, especially men, okay, and of course women also. We have to include facts so that they will believe. You can also include testimonies so that they will, they would know that your ideas have transformed people, have helped people. And the more you present facts, arguments, testimonies, wherein they would see people being transformed by what you're saying, then they are likely to believe that. And more importantly, once you're presenting arguments and facts, you have to make it sure that it will be connected to their feelings. Okay. In other words, for example, you're telling them that this product has like, let's that's a lot of gigs okay so what what is in it for me if i have a lot of gigs in my phone you can tell them you can make them see that a lot having a lot of gigs in their phone okay is not ordinary because you'll have a lot of memories in your pockets a lot of songs in your pocket and you make them see that they should feel special because only people have those gigs and with that, they should be feeling more special. In other words, from the gigs, which are facts, you can convert that into feelings because they should be feeling special. So the facts should have, should be also be connected to the emotions because facts are just numbers. But if they'll see how it will impact them, how it will, okay, give them advantages then they are most likely to tune in to your message okay so if you'll take a look at that okay burlos in one of the theories the one i've earlier said that there are a lot of barriers in the in terms of source and the receivers like of course you'll have different attitude as a source you have a different beliefs you have a different culture you have a different demographic profile 
you have a different communication skills and the other person do also have those different skills the different set of interests different demographic profile different communication skills and you are a totally different person so if you are the speaker and you would see that that you know that there is a goal in your mind but the other person don't see or doesn't see that you have a goal so you have to lead that person very patiently you have to lead that person very carefully you have to use a lot of senses once you are presenting you can guide that person by using your sense of touch sense of sense of visual senses Okay, you have to make him see, make him smell. So it's like you are a totally different person. Let's say maybe a clearer version would be if you are leading a blind because he doesn't see what you see, then most likely, let's say, you'll be making him walk in the ladies room, a friend, a, a friend that is blind, and you are about to lead him into the ladies room and you are in the bedroom so okay you can use the words that are very very descriptive you can make mention that okay the ladies room is three kilometers from the bedroom and then if your friend or lady blind friend doesn't know how how far is a three kilometers you can explain it using a very descriptive word like can be like 10 steps okay 20 steps and the more you use elaborative words, the more example, then he or she will better understand that. You can also use your sense of touch. You can touch him so that he will trust you. And uh, of course, you have to okay, use a lot of tangible words that he or she will understand. If your vocabulary is so high or so not that descriptive or something that he or she cannot understand, then you have to find vocabulary that will be that will be resonating to the other person in other words once you're communicating you have to monitor the feedback of your audience or the person you're talking to to okay so once you're speaking it you know, you cannot afford not to look with your with your receiver you have to make it sure that you you're trying to find out okay are these words resonating to them are they seemingly understanding what I what I'm saying are they nodding or are they shaking her heads so you know that you you need more words more descriptive words more meaningful words if you know that their eyes their facial expressions their muddy movements if they seemingly do not understand then you have you need more elaboration to and more examples so that they will understand what you're saying. In other words, once you're communicating, if you want to be understood, you have to have a lot of preparations. By preparing a lot of words, you also have to be keep, um, doing your research in advance. What are the interests, the lifestyles? What are the words that seemingly they're familiar with? What uh, how are they as a human being, as a person? What are their preferences? The more you know about your audience, the most likely you're going to be understood by them. Because communication is complex. You are a different person and the other person is a different person, as I'm saying. And it demands a lot of preparation. But if you prepare, if you can choose your words carefully, if you'll be able to deliver better with enthusiasm, with persuasiveness, with warmth, then the other person will likely be too convinced. So I would like you to study more about Aristotle and his theory and rhetoric about if for you to be more persuasive, he was saying that you can analyze your ethos or your credibility and trust. You can also analyze the way you present facts by also connecting it to the pathos of the emotions. You can also study Brello's theory where you'll see different ver barriers in communication. So there are barriers in terms of source, you have also barrier in terms of the message, okay, the message, the way you structure your message, the way you treat your message, the way the codification should be structured. So, and also there is barrier in terms of using the channel 
showcase some channel of how they have constraints and affordances or advantages and disadvantages. So the the choices of channel will also affect the way you communicate and of course the receiver. Okay. So there are a lot of barrels leaders in our total would be able to help you to be more persuasive in terms of communicating. And if you have more theories that you're using to be more effective communicator, or better yet, if you have techniques that for you to be more effective and to be better understood, please write in the comments below so that other people will also be learning on how, what are your techniques if you are delivering a speech or becoming a better conversation. Okay, so I hope okay, the, the terminologies you've learned from today will be able to, you can use that behaviorally, behaviorally or in different speaking engagements or different situations like in the class, in your training, or when you're communicating with your family members, with your friends. So hopefully that... Okay, this video will be shared by you to, the, to your friends and acquaintances and classmates and co-trainees so that if they need help on how to be more effective in communication, then they can tune it to this channel. And if you like this type of video when I'll be helping you to how to communicate better, how to be a better speaker, a better writer, a better blogger, okay, a better writer. So, okay, please share this video and please comment on how you can be a better speaker and what were your techniques when you were when you that you that you'd like to share with other people here on how to become better communicator if you have also topics or that you'd like us to learn and to grow from each other to share with each other then you can also right in the comment below so if you'd like also this type of video where you can subscribe share and like uh, my video and also if you'd like to connect with me you can email me at cinchdidal05 at gmail.com and the spelling of that is cinch c as in charlie y as in yankee N as in Nancy, C as in Charlie also, and H as in Hotel, C-H-C-Y-N-C-H-05 at gmail.com. I hope I can connect with you. I, connect, I can connect with you, and I hope we can form a community wherein we can help each other grow, and we can have a growing environment in YouTube. Thank you so much. See you again. God bless you, and may God bless us all, and of course, the world. And may we all may enjoy the rest of our Sunday. Bye-bye. See you then.